Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 3, episode number 7 and 8, Reaction. Alright, uh, the previous two episodes, it was uh, two episodes which was focused on um, Lin and her family, her sister. And uh, we get to know uh, quite a lot of things about them, her backstory. Uh, and you know, like the whole, uh, what their relationship was with Toph, this and that. And uh, we see their like you know relationship is not good, uh, you know Lin and her sister Su Yin, and there was a reason behind that uh, because like you know by the end of it we get to know how uh, Toph never really like you know got the time to like you know uh, act proper not act properly but you know like uh, to spend time with them and she thought that ah I'm giving them freedom which I never got. So it should be good but she wasn't able to realize that giving too much freedom is also not good so you know like this whole thing was like that uh lin really respected uh Toph, but when that situation happened where suyin got into one of the like cases was almost going to get arrested her tearing off the arrest warrant actually um made like and i i feel like that that really hurt uh lin at that moment because for her like you know Toph was like the role model for like you know a perfect person the chief of police and she always like you know just followed her footsteps but now like seeing that and uh, and so you know herself also had a lot of other like you know grievances but she also came around by the end of it as she says like you know uh, after she left she like you know toured the whole world in a way got into a pirate crew this and that and she was a changed woman by the end of it so was basically like you know like their past problems still kind of being like you know burdening them and uh, they had like a little grievances and by the end of it due to acupuncture <laughs> and all that um they were able to actually properly talk and fight it out you know and in the end of it everything is okay uh, opal is uh, a new airbender who is suyin's daughter she is going to join us i guess uh, in the air temple and um yeah like everything uh ended quite nicely while on the other hand zahir and his crew he and them like you know they are like uh they were in republic city trying to get the president and they were like no let's get out of here first and uh so they they are able to escape republic city by the end of it and uh yeah in the end we get to see zahir was like oh i know where they are they, he was meditating and stuff he says that Korra is with the metal benders and there you go now Zahid is going to come for us so let's see what happens in these two episodes this is episode number seven of the legend of Korra book three so yeah I'll be putting the subtitles in the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, original airbenders. Ah, <laughs> look at the spirits. <laughs> oh my god, Boomy. Bumju is there as well. Oh, this guy's pretty. Oh, that's his name? Yeah. He's an otaku, that's why, like, probably a airbender otaku or something. <laughs> oh, what's happening? <laughs> oh my god. Yo! 
<laughs> what? Wow, okay. Well, first study. Yes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, are these like... No, I think these are like wild herd. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Nice. Okay, Opal is here. I'm... Is she? <laughs> Poor Tenzin. Oh, they're here. Hmm. Yeah. Good luck. Lucky, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was just saying that. Oh my god. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bowling out. Hmm. Uh, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll come together. Ah, <laughs> boomy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe, yeah, maybe he can help you out. Yeah. <laughs> Make him the class monitor or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully. Oh. Good friends. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Calm down. Little by little. Okay. There you go. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Yo, move. You're an airbender, move! <laughs> Wait, you lost your... Oh! Oh yeah! <laughs> I still think she needs a little... okay a little bit more time <laughs> okay <laughs> now nah, you'll be the class monitor from today Yeah, you teach or oh twice 
Yeah. Oh no. Uh, I don't think... Will that work? Like... Okay! Oh! Wake up everybody! Time to go to... <laughs> there you go! You, you, you gave him the idea! Boomy? Yep. <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> he forgot that he's also part of that group. <laughs> For a moment. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh, do is also here. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Brought it up, this up on yourself. So, there you go. I feel like everyone's going to go fall asleep or something. <laughs> Let's start the original training. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. Nah. <laughs> so <laughs> well, he said it, so. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, this guy. This is this is Otaku, isn't it? Oh, is that the reason why? Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> ah, perfect. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> He's like, what the hell you told me? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a bit too much. Um, no. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh no. Okay. Oh! <laughs> nice guy. Okay, guy is doing pretty well. Oh my god, those are cactus! <gasps> Oh! Guy's a natural. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Good. Boomy. Oh no! Nice! Come on! Oh, oh my god, oh my god! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Too old. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Uh. uh.
Okay, Tenzin, you're going too far now. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Scooting away. <laughs> okay, let's have a tournament between you two. Dad versus daughter. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, they're going to be even worse. Like, especially Milo. <laughs> okay. Oh. Nah, it's not that. Yeah. License? Yeah. Oh, spirit. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh no. The poachers. These are poachers, aren't they? Oh my god. What the hell are they doing here? You some random. Who's. Who is this? Oh damn, who is this? Oh great. Uh, so there, I'm guessing they're... Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, like uh, you should look at it from there, yeah, perspective. <laughs> All right, that's not the point here. <laughs> yeah. Let's boo me. Come on, half of this was your plan. You you said told him that Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's a swag. <laughs> oh no. Come on, quick, these people are the way oh my god. Oh they're yeah they're What the hell? What? Yo, this queen is trash. So that bear, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, she can uh, probably ask the spirits. What the? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom Juice, like, come on, the brother. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, lead, lead the way. Shouldn't you go tell Tenzin first?
Iya. Yeah. Iya. Yeah. Oh ya, oke. Oke, now he'll shine. He's a commander now, you know, leader. Oke, okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What the hell? Okay, yeah, yeah, he can. Hopefully, no one sees him. Okay, nice. Ooh. All right, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, God, Evan. Uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Okay, come on. This is the time. They're distracted. Let's go. Yep. Oh no. Where's Boomy? Oh no. Oh, he was able to. Oh, he was able to feel it. The hair. It's it's not there. That's why. Perfect. Oh, Milo's here. Oh, nice. Oh, Milo's just... Oh no, they're trying to leave. Stop that. Oh my god. Will... Okay, okay. Tenzin will probably be able to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Come on. Oh. <coughs> oh, nice. Oh. Uh, okay, but can you drive? Okay. Here you go. Yep, you're in the wrong territory, dude. <coughs> oh. Yo, this guy has a bison fur. That's scum. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stops him in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt that before from this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Like just like the moles of the original Earthbenders as far as I can remember. Yeah. 
Okay, there you go. Oh, the baby one. <laughs> oh, maybe they can be tamed. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, oh, what's happening? I'm floating. <laughs> this never happened before. <laughs> uh, all right. Wow, that was a nice episode. Okay, so... Uh, all right, so we get more development with the airbenders and we get to see more of the new airbenders that we have and our new air nation so <laughs> at first we were like <laughs> in the first scene uh you know everyone was like just talking amongst each other you know like just like like in a classroom what happens you know the first few students just pay attention half of the other students are just doing their own thing half of them are sleeping <laughs> half of them are just talking or half of them are just distracted <laughs> and it, it, it just that's what happens and uh, yeah this is like you know pretty much the same Tenzin just talking about some uh, like you know like some uh, airbender history or something yeah and uh, like there's this this guy I think otaku that was his name <laughs> it's interesting his name is otaku basically like you know otaku like uh, like probably an airbender otaku he's just he just love loves airbenders or bending something like that that's why he probably just learned everything about that and that's why he can just you know uh answer any questions and like you know just like it's so paying so much paying attention <laughs> so he's like oh me me I'll, I'll answer and tenzin's like no this is the like you know like fourth time you've answered the question uh why don't someone else answer but nobody's like you know listening <laughs> okay now <laughs> Boomi, like as always, Boomi is kind of like the you know uh, what do you call them, uh, the the person who jokes around in class, you know, like <laughs> is doing his own thing and messing around. Uh, so okay, now here we get to see more uh, bisons, and they talk about how they could like you know like they want their own bisons, but Tenzin says that we don't have much bisons and uh, like not enough for so many people here <clears throat> and we could see some uh like you know like some wild bisons just flying around and uh like by the end of it i guess they will probably i don't know like pet some of them and like you know like tame some of them and start taking care of them maybe, maybe the little ones or maybe the, like you know, the mom mother and the child both of them they're, they're going to take them all in or something and that's why how maybe they'll have enough bisons for them i don't know or maybe they'll just let them leave i still don't know i'm the, the next episode will probably tell what's going to happen because in the end we could see they're very friendly towards the bison like and the bisons are very friendly towards them so who knows anything can happen but we'll see um <clears throat> okay so more airbenders come in kaya um ikki milo all of them are here and uh pema's also here with rohan they talk about how Zahir got in this that and uh, yeah Akaya talks about how he she drove them away while Korra calls Tenzin and talks about Opal how she's going there I'm going to join them in their temple now interesting thing like like the, the like you know Korra actually gave him an idea she's like why don't you give Bumi a little responsibility so that he could you know like help you out instead of going against you <coughs> now i feel like this this would uh, was a very nice uh what can i say like you know uh like idea but i feel like tenzin should have done something else here he should have just left you know the responsibility for example half of it on boomy and let him realize like oh this is what it feels like to teach someone and when they don't listen to you or something like that like that would like you know i'm sure that would make him excited as well because he'll be like a leader or something and he loves being the leader and uh, he would also be able to understand what tenzin is going through and not actually disrupt the class or something you know like the way he usually does so i thought it was going to go in that direction you know like he would say something like oh you know what uh boomy uh why don't you take the class for like this two or three days and uh, something like that. but he kind of went on a different direction <laughs> which kind of escalated into a more bigger problem 
Now, okay, so uh, he, like, you know, Korra gives them the idea while on the other side, uh, Kai and Jinora, they, <clears throat> they are like, all right, let's go see the little baby bisons there. <laughs> the baby bisons were very cute. The way they were kind of just <laughs> playing with each other. <laughs> oh. Okay, now the baby bisons were pretty, like, you know, what do you call it? pretty uh friendly from the beginning uh, we see like you know kai comes in and is just petting them and they're like licking him and everything trying to lick him but the <laughs> mom was not happy she's like oh <laughs> she was mad and obviously you know there's some random person just comes in <laughs> and, and starts petting your child like obviously you're going to be a little bit you know like you'll be like what the hell is happening what's like you know what's what's he up to so yeah, basically that. And she was not happy about it. Tried to like, <laughs> tried to just, you know, I don't like bump into him or something. Yeah, yeah. He, he, she charged into Kai. Uh, Jinora uh, helped her him out and got him out of the situation. And here they kind of talk about how uh, Jinora didn't get her tattoo. And Kai talks about how she could get one because she is so good at it. You know, like she she's like almost a master now i still think that jinora should wait a little bit more you know um <clears throat> because like yeah she she is strong you, you know that she she can talk with the spirits and everything but i i don't know i feel i feel like she, she should wait a little bit more uh before getting the tattoos because i don't know i feel like she maybe she has a little bit more learning to do or something i don't know but we'll see about that uh so Jinora is like, yeah, maybe I'll talk to dad about it. <laughs> On the other side, uh, Tenzin comes and asks Bumi for help. And here you go. Like here I kind of thought he would uh, like, you know, give half of the responsibility to Bumi and tell him that, all right, you take the classes for two or three days. And yeah, I'll just watch. And I think that would have worked a lot better because as I said, like, he loves being the leader. He would happily take that job. And he would understand what Tenzin is going through, and maybe he would, like, you know, try to help him out and, you know, like, be more uh, attentive or something, something like that, maybe. But the way this goes is something at first I thought it would work, but it actually did not, because Tenzin himself has a lot of improving to do, especially in these this department where he gets so heated up whenever, like, you know, something just is, like, you know, like relating to Airbenders happen. Like he's so passionate about it. it it sometimes goes a little bit too far so basically what he does is like all right uh, boomy you tell me what am i supposed to do and boomy as always you know he he doesn't even think about the whole situation it's like oh if this was me i would do you know break them down and build them back up this and that he talks about <laughs> and <clears throat> now i don't know what he thought he probably didn't realize that he is also part of that group and then he's going to do the same thing to him. <laughs> oh god. And <laughs> the next day Tenzin just starts completely just going crazy. He's like, alright, wake up you guys, let's go, morning jog. And just they start climbing up mountains <laughs> in the mid like in the in the very morning, early in the morning. <laughs> Everyone's just like you know cold shivering and just sleepy and then it's like what are you doing recruits just like you know like this is barely the start let's do meditating now and then they start doing meditating and then like you know like the balancing exercise this that while Bhumi is like you know what maybe maybe i was wrong you know but Tenzin is not listening to him Tenzin is like nope recruit you do your thing uh you do what i tell you to do and there you go. Boomy realizes what mess he has gotten himself into. <laughs> now, here's an interesting thing. I didn't realize this. The reason behind shaving your head. Now, Tenzil does says that uh, shaving your head is your own choice. You can do it or you cannot. You know, that's up, up to you completely. And uh, I think Do or Daw, what was his name? I always forget his name. It's either Do or Daw. Um, that guy, he gets his head shaved it was him wasn't he yeah uh gets his head sh head shaved and he obviously didn't realize that it was like the, she had a, he had a choice uh i feel like if 
he realized that he wouldn't have shaved his head <laughs> after the deed Tenzin is like oh it's your choice I and mean, if you don't want to it's fine and do is like what the hell <laughs> like what you didn't tell me <laughs> but here's an interesting thing here i didn't know that the hate like you know you shave the hate because you actually are able to feel like you know the change in pressure or something you know, like like some air or whatever coming from your behind and you can uh, respond properly now i didn't really realize how this would work out in practical but we got a pretty good demonstration by the end of this episode where we get to know that yeah it really helps out because here tenzin says like all right like you know the the reason why <clears throat> like you know the heads are shaved uh because to feel the wind around him there you go and uh, at first everyone was like skeptical but then later on we see when do himself was able to realize what's happening he's like you know what guys like you know it's really true like you should try it and he's telling everyone and you know i, I you know what i feel like this is basically what happens i feel like uh, like you know in most of the like you know in the air nomads that i've seen all of them i think like have their head shaven so i feel like like you know, in the beginning i'm pretty sure a lot of people would hesitate in getting their head shaven but maybe like you know after getting into battles and stuff they realize that it is really helpful to get their head shaved or something like that and that's why like you know by the end of it everyone ends up shaving it and i feel like that's basically what's going to happen here as well you know they're going to actually realize the importance and they're going to shave their head by the end of it because i've seen a lot of air nomads in avatar the last air and i've never seen any of them with their head not shaven and i feel like basically by the end of it everyone realizes the importance and they end up shaving so i don't know maybe just like how do uh, in the beginning was kind of skeptical but in the end he was like oh this is pretty good you know like you can feel the air you can realize what's happening and uh, yeah <clears throat> and it is very important like you know, i feel like shaving your head especially in a, during a battle will help in a lot of ways for example your enemy cannot grab your hair you know like that's why you know like when you're fighting or anything if, if someone grabs your hair oh my god it's it's over it's, it's it's a pain and that's number one number two obviously you can feel like you know like the air difference or whatever and realize what's happening so yeah all that stuff all right so okay the uh, Jinora tries to tell uh, Tenzin that you know like I feel like you're doing this too much but Tenzin again like you know gets into his whole like you know passionate thing about airbenders being like you know like uh, like you know he has the best in uh, mind for them all that stuff he starts saying and here again like you know I'm like Tenzin you should like you know this is what this is one thing that Tenzin never does he never puts like you know tries to see the situation from the other person's perspective he's always like you know stubborn with his own ideals and so much like you know that he he never realizes that like you know even before he used to do that nowadays it's a little bit lesser you know he used to be a lot more stubborn before but nowadays it's a lot lesser especially after the whole jinora situation uh, you know like the whole spirit situation but still it is there little so <laughs> i'm sure it's going to take a lot of time for a person to completely change and he is changing little by little so I'm glad about that but still he again gets on to his whole thing about like oh like you know like I man I know what I'm doing like you know I <laughs> I'm trying the best for them you know like just talks about all, all that and uh, at first like you know like uh, Bumi is like you know what I'm done with this I'm old I don't want to go back into the army again and he just leaves and <laughs> the other airbenders are like like when are we going to be go home I'm starving what's happening and Tenzin is like 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 no not now and like you know, he just starts getting completely <laughs> mad at the situation and he's like all right um Jinora you take over Jinora takes the situation and she's like okay so if I'm a, such like you know like almost like a master that I can take care of the class don't shouldn't I have my tattoos Tenzin is like no you're too young and just goes away <laughs> Do you know what I was mad? <laughs> Tenzin <laughs> leaves Milo and Iki in, in the hole. Like, you know, oh my god. <laughs> in charge of the class. And Milo's even... <laughs> even more crazier. He's like... 
<laughs> he's just okay ah uh, all right so kai and uh jinora uh, kai was like all right let's go to the bison that'll make you happy they go there and find up these bison rustlers or yeah, i think that's what they call them at, at first i thought they were poachers and then i realized poachers actually i think poachers actually kill the animals aren't don't they yeah they don't they don't take them they, they basically kill them i think that's what poachers are you know what let me double check poacher uh kills or ta oh no no kills or takes wild animals okay so yeah you can call them poachers i guess they can basically uh try to take them so that uh they can sell them to the earth queen and yeah they got captured over there like they, they, it took them by surprise they get captured while on the other hand tenzin is trying to calm down pema comes and gives them uh, gives him a little bit you know uh advice and this is needed you know like because pema tells him about her situation it's like you know what i also felt like this when i was beginning i became the air acolyte and uh, the bed was hard this and that and then just like oh but it's good for the back and <laughs> they was like that's not the point and yeah that's really like you know like what he does what Tenzin always does he he always brings up his own experiences and his own thing he doesn't realize that other people see the world differently like you know not everyone is Tenzin you know the way he sees the world someone else might see the world differently and that applies to his daughters as well daughter and son as well so he should realize that and always try to like you know uh be in the situation try to envision the situation from the other's perspective he never does that and he, he, here he says like oh but it's good for the back you know <laughs> payment's like that's not the point you know the the point here is yeah these these people are probably feeling the same way they're maybe scared maybe like you know anxious this and that not happy with the situation and uh, yeah you should you should think of them first <clears throat> and uh, okay now he uh, tenzin goes to bumi and tries to apologize <laughs> and bumi's like nope i'm not you know like i'm not doing anything i'm not like you know coming back and stuff like that happens and he gets tenzin gets to know that uh Jinora snuck out with kai so he tries to go and bring them back in and Jinor, on the other hand, is uh, Jinor and Kai have been locked up in the cages. They're going to take them to the Earth Queen. And oh my god, they hear one of the most shocking things come up. This guy says that she ate her dad's pet bear. He does say that it's a rumor. Where, where, okay, where is that one? The Earth Queen and her fancy friends pay big money for bison steaks and other weird meat. I even heard she ate her dad's pet bear. What the hell? I, I, I remember the bear, you know? I forgot the name even though. Uh, the, the bear that was with uh, the Earth King in Avatar The Last Airbender. So she ate him. What the hell? Like, oh my god. Yo, th this, this queen needs to go. Like, what is... Oh, oh my god. This is insane oh. and okay so uh, Jinora then uh, talks to a spirit and tells him to go and relay this to someone else to Bumju and the spirit comes talks to Bumju and Bumju <laughs> I love the little back and forth between Bumju and Bumi they're just talking Bumju was probably trying to uh, like you know just calm him down and Bumi was like no I am not having any of this you know like I just a little back and forth okay now Bumju tells Bumi and he really understands him you know like even though like he, he says like I kind of get a feel for it like it's not that he understands what he's saying but he gets the feel what he's trying to say something like that I guess which is interesting like because Bumju here basically tries to say him that Tor tell him that oh Jino is in trouble and he realized that just as soon as he listened to him and he was like oh Jino is in trouble and yeah, he goes to the air, uh, uh, act, uh, like you know, the, the the new air recruits, airbender recruits, tells them, and they're like, let's go. And because Tenzin is not here now, they take the bisons, go in, and this is perfect for him. He's like the commander here. 
he like you know kind of uh scouts the situation and they're like and he gives a little speech as well like i mean he says like even though you guys are not ready they're saying like you know we're not ready i don't think we can handle a fight but he says like i know like you know you, you guys train more than anyone and i'm sure like you know we are not definitely not going to let this happen because we are like you know like in a few of us there's a few of us airbenders if we don't stick for each other then who will and uh, yeah the operation starts uh, the first little thing that happens the little distraction that kai uh, does here he kind of picks the lock uh, takes that comes out of the cage <laughs> i love the way the bison kind of <laughs> like kind of like you know turned around and fell down <laughs> flop into the ground <laughs> that was cute we fell down uh, they, they remind me of pandas aren't they like these bisons flying bisons they're kind of like pandas the way they kind of just you know <laughs> it just kind of rolls around and everything <laughs> i don't know um okay so yeah he he tries to free jinora first but oh boy um the 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 bison wrestlers or whatever they get to know they try to stop him and this was the distraction they needed and uh, the air uh, recruits go in they start attacking and these are earthbenders so they try stopping them do or dog whatever his name is i forget um he realizes that you know the bald head here the air kind of comes in and he realizes something's behind and he uses his like you know air bending to stop that that was a really good moment and that really showed how you know like how it is actually like you know really helpful in practical situation as well like as i said like you know at that moment when tenzin said theoretically even i was a little bit skeptical about that thing i was like wait does it really work like that but here we go we get an actual practical like you know example in front of us and yeah now i'm like yeah it really does work and just like you know, it was just like the same thing that do also realized do also realized that yeah it does work and he's now telling everyone to he's like you know what it, guys it really works and that's how i was able to do this you guys should also get shaved <laughs> uh. all right and the fighting begins tenzin uh sorry boomy is giving the commands this that and everyone's going down but the final boss guy he gets in the um, truck and drives off with it jinora's still in it and uh, kai goes uh, following them and uh, the bisons are also following them because obviously the kids are in it uh, tenzin sees that and then this also goes in and then a little bit of you know like just shoving around and everything the bisons come and just just you know just kind of attacks the truck and uh, yeah by the end of it he has to come out and kai just goes in and starts just <laughs> starts ram slamming him into the ground using air bending then since like we never attack uh, people who are unarmed but that was a good technique you know i'll give you that <laughs> okay and there you go everything goes well and they are locked up those bison rustlers and here daw is talking like and you know, telling everyone like you know guys it's, it's pretty nice you know like the shaved head you, you should try it too and i feel like probably the next time we see them a lot of them will get their head, heads shaved we'll see but yeah okay now bumi uh, also comes and kind of apologizes a little bit in the end he he talks about how he always felt that he's never part of the air nation before because how he's not a bender and all, all you know and that's why he still feels fear that he might not be able to live up to it and you can say like you know like uh, that previously ang you know like like ang was the type like a you new know, type of person who he kind of looked up to now it's tenzin you can say because you know like he probably feels like he he would disappoint tenzin just like he di disappointed uh, ang because in his mind that's what he he thinks he thinks that he disappointed ang and now he thinks like since ang is not here but tenzin is basically in his place he's afraid of not afraid but kind of yeah afraid you can say of disappointing him because finally he got air bending and if he messes up in that as well uh, that's why he kind of like you know uh, uh, asks like an acts like the class joker that type of a thing you know he, he he's just uh, insecure about it and we've seen that like we've seen that before as well in his 
and conversations and stuff we've always seen how um, you know he he has this kind of a uh, inferiority complex that yeah I, I never was able to make that proud so yeah that's still kind of working on him but i'm sure it'll like you know he, he's going to get his confidence little by little because he's learning to airbend and uh, yeah okay so that was that now then in the end uh, jinora talks to tenzin and jinora says like okay so oh uh, tenzin also says like i'm sorry like you know i should like not treat you like that again like a kid and jinora's like can i get a tattoo and he's like all right i'll think about it and the air bison start flying the little ones and they're very friendly towards them now and yeah everything ends well so that was that that was episode number seven let's start episode number eight and uh, yeah i'll bring the surprise and the timer here stick it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> Yeah. Oh yeah. Gazan, Mingwa, Lee. Okay, let's see. His her training. Ooh! Oh! Yo! Nice! Oh yeah, but he has experience. <laughs> Come on, don't say something like that to Bolin. Oh! Oh. <laughs> hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But he's she's the avatar, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh boy, pull in. Oh, nice. <laughs> Veggie wraps. <laughs> uh, like you, you, yeah. Eventually, it'll go. <laughs> oh <laughs> okay <laughs> all right no varick yeah <laughs> julie <laughs> oh wait really um is it working What then? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> where's um? Where's uh, Lynn? Oh, there she is. I was like, where's Lynn?
All right. Hmm. All right. <laughs> oh no, I feel like Zahir is going to come. Oh no, yep. This feels like Zahir is going to come now. And there you go, speak of the devil. Ah, and. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, Pabu, Pabu, come on. Wake, wake up. <laughs> Understand. Great. Oh my god. Oh no. Naga, I, I feel like Naga's going to wake up. Yep. Oh, Cora. Yeah, yeah, she woke up. Oh my god. Oh no. What is that? Like some kind of anesthetic? Come on, slap him away. Yeah, just. Move! Oh my god. Oh yeah, the, oh my god. They have earthbender, waterbender, airbender, firebender, everything. Not a metal bender though. Oh, the, yeah, this place is secure yeah he could she could just blow it up damn she can curve it yo i don't know i don't oh yeah uh, lynn is here Oh my god, I feel like... Oh no, they're melting the... Okay. Yeah, move, guys. Oh my god. Yeah. My god, this is a mess. All right, she's awake. But she's... Okay. Nice. Nice. Ooh, this, these guys can... Okay. Where's Suyin? There they are. Okay, I was like, where are they? Okay. Damn. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, the the forehead. Yeah, 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 the the thing that you did before. Yeah, yeah, the thing that you did to one of those. It's bowling time, yep. Let's go! Okay! I 
All right. Uh... No, 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 no. No! Oh my god, yo! Okay, there, there, there. Okay, this time, this is time. Okay, come on. Stun her. Yeah. Nice! Perfect! Move! Okay, off, oh, thank. Uh, okay. Whew. Well, Zahir. Ah. Oh my god. Yo, someone stop him. Okay, uh... Can someone please... Oh! Nice! There you go! There you go! Wow, that was a successful defense! I'm surprised they were able to do it. Defend. Yeah. Probably an anesthetic or something. Yeah. Joshua, okay. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Wait, so is that how he realized that they're with the metal vendors? Oh, yeah, he's a truth seeker. He probably lies all the time. He's lying. Great. <laughs> oh, is it true? I think it's true. Okay, there you go. I thought it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh no, oh no. Oh, oh! Yeah. It's pretty apparent the way You know what could happen maybe he's the one who's this guy the truth seeker Like that could also I don't know maybe he planted some evidence Come on. Or maybe not. Maybe he is the one who's.
Okay, maybe it is him. Okay, never mind. Like, yeah, I okay. The truth seeker. Oh boy. It's him. True. No, 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 no. Okay, so yeah, like uh, the truth. See, <laughs> right. Oh, my God, Zul is like. Yep. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's him. It's a truth seeker or whatever. Julie's just. Yeah, like. Ivy, that's the thing. Like, no one would question him because he's the truth seeker himself. Hmm. Okay, enough, Bolin. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. Oh my god, Bolin. All right. Oh, a secret compartment. Yeah. Oh, should we go in? Uh, oh no, where do we hide? Oh, ah, uh, we just uh, yeah, we. That's a very bad excuse. Yeah, the tea would be spiked with something. We know what's going to happen. Don't drink it, please. Hmm. <sighs> well. Oh my god, don't drink the tea. You. Okay, here we go. Great. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, you can we break this door even? Oh.
My God. Well, okay. Ah, uh. Oh my god. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go, okay. Oh. Uh. I feel like... Uh, yeah... Okay. Okay. Oh my god, she's here with some other plan. That's why he said that. That's why she said that. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we need to do this quick. He probably didn't, wasn't able to go far enough. Oh, that's very dense. Okay, interesting. So, there you go. We we get to know how he was able to. Like, I th <laughs> I thought in that episode, you know, when Zahir was meditating, I was like, how was he able to understand? He's with the metal benders, and uh, he was like meditating. I'm like, wow, like does, does this guy have like like you know, he's like such a sage or something that he can like meditate and track down people like something like that i was like wow like zahid now i realize like it was probably something else he he realized i don't know how i wait contacted him at that moment but somehow he contacted him and told him that oh he's with the metal benders and it makes so much sense now because since i was with cora and like you know he saw them over there he was able to tell uh zahir that yeah Cora is here and uh, yeah that that's how it how what happened at that moment okay this episode it begins with Cora and uh you know the kids um su su what was her name su yin i think yeah su yin uh su yin's kids are kind of practicing air bend uh, uh, metal bending while bolin was also there <laughs> at first Cora, we can see Cora has been able to adapt it still quickly but bowling is a little bit struggling with it still mm -hmm. but yeah i'm sure he, he he'll be able to do it little by little and here <clears throat> we get to see bowling's special technique 
What was the name? Bo Go Bowling or Bowlingo? <laughs> Something like that, I think. Like, that was interesting. He he kind of uh, put up a li little a little uh, piece of uh, earth and used it as kind of like a precision on precision shot. And uh, <laughs> I guess it probably like I mean, he can probably control it that easily because he is a pro a pro bender. And he says here, like, even metal bands is too difficult. And we, we saw that before, like, he, he kind of hesitated because he thought that metal bending is not something that he'll be able to do ever. Uh, so he's still struggling, but I am sure he'll be able to get it. <laughs> but Cora is like, yeah, I, 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 I like, I'm, like I'm, I'm the metal bender master Cora or something. <laughs> he said like that. So yeah, all right. Uh, that was that, and then we get a little farewell party for Opa, and uh, <laughs> this part was interesting. Like everyone was doing their own thing. For example, oh my God, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Varric. Yeah, Varric just brings out like an Airbender detector, and he's like, oh, this can track Airbenders, and then <laughs> directs it at Cora. It doesn't work. And he's like, oh, you need to airbend first. And I'm like, what? what that? Doesn't that defeat the purpose of this? But I guess, like, you know, like, obviously, Cora will be there. So she can use that. Like, you know, kind of airbend a little and use that to track who's an airbender. And yeah, this might help, you know, in the future. Maybe if someone is lying, someone is like, oh, I'm not an airbender. But then this thing kind of indicates that, oh, this is an airbender. We'll be able to get, understand. But all that will probably be, be paused for now because um no more hunting airbenders we need to deal with zahir and i way first okay so yeah the 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 farewell party kind of like you know uh, goes underway and uh, yeah if opal leaves for the air temple <laughs> bowl is sad <laughs> okay and then everyone's like you know in the night everything just kind of shuts down Everyone's sleeping and uh, yeah, in comes Zahir and his crew. Pabu was the one who realized at the beginning, but <laughs> Bolin was like, oh, Pabu, it's not time to play. Go back to sleep. And yeah, unless and until Naga, like, you know, was able to realize, like, I, I guess like when Pabu see, saw that they're actually taking her away, that's when Pabu went crazy and like, you know, brought Bolin up, uh, uh, woke Bolin up from sleep. Okay, so they sneak in. Now, you know what? I really wasn't, uh, I didn't understand uh, even then here that they had inside uh, connections. Like, it would, it's, it's very like, you know, like, um, what can I say? It's, it's very, uh, like, I feel like I should have realized this, but I don't know why, but I never thought about it. I thought like there would be no one here who'd actually betray Suyin because um, as Suyin said, like, you know, she, she, like, you know, met a lot of these people from his, uh, her outside adventures. So I thought maybe no one will actually betray her. So that's why I probably never thought that there's some inside spy. Uh, turns out that was actually the case. I, I really thought Zahir and their crew came here, uh, like, you know, without any outside preparation. They just came here, uh, without having any inside person here. But turns out I was wrong. All right, uh, they get to Cora's room. Pabu wakes up, but uh, like you know, kind of growls a little bit before she is uh, like you know, kind of the 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 thing is used, the anesthetic or whatever it's called, uh, and she falls asleep. And Cora, within that time, is also able to wake up. She tries to stop them, but there's like four of them. And uh, yeah, the thing hits her as well. She goes completely uh, numb and probably goes unconscious. And they take her away. Now this, like in the next time, Pabu's like, oh, like, yeah, I really need to wake Bolin up. And he just starts jumping on top of Bolin. And Bolin wakes up and sees them taking Cora <laughs> away. And Bolin is like, okay, like, let's go. Cora's been taken away. Marco also wakes up and everyone's just wide awake now and uh, the security has been alerted and uh, yeah 
they are trapped this part was very impressive i i was actually expecting them taking kokora away because i feel like usually in these type of situations most of the time in animes and stuff the enemies kind of win because it's really di difficult to defend you know like def like you know who people who are in the de defensive are like the most disadvantageous because they have to defend someone they're like you know these people are trying to take away if they're able to take away that's it but they need to actually stop them and take the person away from them without harming them that's like a lot of responsibility and needs a lot of preparations and everything and they were barely like they, they were sleeping at night they just woke up and suddenly they see stuff like this happening so it was a very difficult situation i was really impressed that they were actually able to stop them uh, and that really shows that as um uh, suyin said that this is probably the safest place uh, if they did not have uh, the spy that we saw and in the end i way this probably would never be able to, like you know they, they would probably would never be able to uh, get in and uh, it, it really would be like the safest place for them and uh, yeah but i way was there so that defeats the purpose of it um because he was a spy <clears throat> And even, even if, uh, like, after they were able to grab Korra and almost they were running away, these four are strong, you know, like, we saw them, like, and they just, like, just left and right, just defeated everyone, even defeated Zuko, in a way, you could say. And we were actually able to stop these four. And that really shows that how these people, the trained people here, the, the guards and everyone, were so capable. Like, when, you know, when, when that scene came, when they grabbed Zahir and, like, took him out of that that little uh, portion in the middle i was like damn these people are like not even side characters they're like some random guards like these people are actually doing something unlike most of the other shows that i've watched where they're basically useless they're used as fodder and here <laughs> like you know they're actually doing something I was really surprised at that, like by seeing the capabilities of these people who don't even have a name and are not even side characters. They're basically random guards. <laughs> they are doing something. I, I was really surprised. I was not expecting this, really. I thought they were going to take Korra away. But yeah, like that really shows how capable these people are. And uh, <clears throat> all right, they kind of, you know, kind of, what do you call it? Just covered them with metal sheets and... Uh, inside, uh, I think, what was his name? Ga Gazim or something like that. The guy who is an earthbender. Uh, he uses lava bending, or not lava bending, sorry, like uses uh, uh, earth bending, yeah, like and it kind of makes a, like a lava pool over there. And it's like just like a little section where they were in that was like only the earth section. And they were kind of protecting themselves. And everyone was attacking them, like, you know, like surrounding them, attacking them one by one. And as I said, they were strong, and I was really surprised that they were able to stop them. Uh, like, for example, uh, Fee, no, what was her name? Flea, yeah, I think that was her name. She, she, she with her, you know, like mind controlled uh, fire bending or explosions, while uh, the, the other girl, what's her name? Mm, it was something with M, I forgot. Uh, she and her water bending, this guy with her, like, with his, uh, like, Gazim with his bending of the earth and, you know, like, using the earth properties to make lava, and Zahi with his air bending. It's just insane. They were just protecting that whole place like that. And, uh, the fight was impressive, I have to say. Um, like, little by little, everyone comes in. Suyin also comes, uh, after, later on, uh, when she realizes what's happening. And as I said, like, and I was really impressed with the guards as well because they were actually able to do something here. Like, they, they actually grabbed Zahid and brought him out of there. Like, I was impressed with that. I was like, damn. <laughs> this never happens ever in any anime. I've never seen anything like this. All right, so now they come up with a plan. They're like, all right, you know what? We can go up from down from up and like, you know, kind of cable, cable down. And they need someone to stun the girl who uses uh, like the explosion. So Bolin with his Bolin Go or whatever it's called, <laughs> his special technique, he can do it. But the problem here is they're actually attacking continuously. So Bolin's like, all right, I can do it. And they go up, Suin and Lin, and uh, kind of like, you know, they're ready over there, walkie-talkie in their hand. 
and Bolin is like, all right, I can do this. They try to stop, uh, like, you know, stun her, but it's kind of impossible within all of these confusion. So <clears throat> they ask him, like, are, are we, are we sup supposed to go now? And he, Bo <laughs> Marco says, no go. And the other side is like, copy that, we are a go. Like that miscommunication was insane. What was that? <laughs> and they jump from there. Bolin's like, all right, now I have to, I have to do it because she, she, otherwise she'll blast them off. Bolin uses his special technique and yes, yeah, stuns the girl and they get in. And now that the girl is stunned, only two of them are there. Zahid is outside. You know, the, the, the earthbender and the waterbender girl, uh, only the, they are over there. So they, like, you know, they're trying to fend off the attackers from the outside. So they could not look at Korra. That's how they were able to get Korra and were able to, like, you know, like, run away from that situation because they were involved with all the others. Now, Zahir does try to kind of grab Korra in the middle of it, but Su Yin with her, um, like this, this part was kind of impressive as well. Like Suin basically, I feel like, uh, as she said, like if you remember, she said like she's like a dancer as well. But I feel like she used that skill. You know, you remember in the previous video when we saw the different uh, metal benders dancing in that like in you know, a formation. I think she basically did that, kind of you know like use her technique, dance techniques, to. Okay, yeah, where is that part? Here it is. yeah 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 she kind of just rotates and uses a few blades i guess throws them and punctures the the glider or whatever and yeah and they they escape from there they're like oh the plane plan has failed and they escape now the question is why were they able to get in you know? uh, wasn't this supposed to be the world's safest place or whatever and uh, now they come to the conclusion, which is the most obvious one, that someone's working with them from here. And who's the best person to, like, you know, like, interrogate them? But Ai Wei, because he is a truth seer. Now, I kind of thought here, like, what is going to happen if she, he's the one who is the enemy here? <laughs> it turns out it was basically him. But I still did not believe, you know, because I was also kind of like Su Yin. I was like, yeah, like, this guy is... Uh, with Su Yin for so many years and like you know like he's supposed to be very um what do you call it like like he's not like like you know like he's supposed to be very trustworthy so like I was like maybe it's not him and boy I was proved wrong now uh, Lin also kind of says like oh why don't you go sister you should also be interrogated and Su Yin was like alright fine like you know like he just goes there and uh, I feel like this, this is the first time we saw Iway kind of get a little bit of a little bit kind of uh, like you know surprised like he he looks at her and he's like what the hell am I supposed to do and then he asks her name like I feel like he was probably thinking um, no uh, no 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 I was going to say I was thinking maybe he was thinking who should I blame my like you know uh, betrayal on and uh, but it turned like you know like but, but but we see in the end that he already had or did he like they went to search the guy who was blamed yeah he already planted all the evidence beforehand so he was already sure who he's going to blame this on okay and uh, all right the, the final guard comes in and at the beginning i was also like yeah maybe this guard is lying because the way he kind of gets nervous i was like all right like maybe he really is the one and uh, <clears throat> you know like at first i really thought the guard was the one then when they start like you know kind of interrogating him and like you know asking what's happened like you know where were you this that and he kind of gets a little bit startled i started having second thoughts about it i thought what would happen if the guy Iway is the one who is the uh, spy here and turns out that was true 
I also was not expecting him to be the spy because just like Su Yin, I thought that he would not be the someone who would betray. It turns out it was him, you know, like they, Marco kind of saw that and Marco was like, all right, you know what? Uh, like, and I feel like something's wrong here because the guard is like 18 years and these people were locked up for 13 years. So how does that even make sense? Varric comes in with his <laughs> intellect, superior intellect. He says like, you know what? I would also probably do something like that, you know, because uh, just blame someone and then plan some evidence. And Marco's like, yeah, because you did that to me before. And Varric's just laughing. Uh, and yeah, that helped Marco out. Marco was like, all right, let's go and search the room. They go there. Ai Wei is not there. Try to find stuff. And... Uh, okay, like they're, they're trying to find everything. Bolin kind of gets distracted easily during that section. Uh, but Marco finds out the secret compartment behind the bookcase. And... Uh, they open it and Iwe comes in at that moment and they quickly close it and they were, were not able to go anywhere. It was just stuck over there. And uh, oh boy, Iwe is like, what are you doing? Why are you trespassing? And that's when he like, you know, like I, he realized that something's probably wrong. So he gives them tea, makes them settle down. Little by little, goes to the bookcase and uh, the thing. The, the, the thing that Bolin was kind of like, you know, just moving around, the little pot or whatever. That was like the secret mechanism, I think. Yeah, let me see again. Like he little by little asks everyone, like, what are you doing here? Like, why are you here? And when they say like, oh, we are suspecting something is wrong here. And then he says, so who do you think is the one behind this? And when he realizes like, yeah, these people are on to me. He Okay, now one thing, what's up with that that pot or whatever? Oh, okay, he he realized like the, the oh my god, I realized what happened. He realized that it was like placed differently in a different place. And the little scratch marks as well. And uh, that's why yeah, okay, that's what he was doing. I was like, why was he doing what was he doing with the pot? Okay, he was, he was seeing that it was placed somewhere different. Yeah, and he takes, like, you know, kind of pulls up the metal thing, barrier or whatever, runs away, and Cora <laughs> Cora tries to kind of metal bend it out, and Uncle's like, why don't you hurry up? And Cora's like, you know that I'm doing this, like, I'm new at this, don't you? It'll, it's going to take me some time. And uh, yeah, they get in. And oh boy, that was a surprise I was not even expecting. They open the door and there's a bomb inside it and it just blasts. Thankfully, Korra was able to uh, airbend everyone to safety. Protected them. And uh, yeah, Suyin is surprised. Suyin is like, wait, he's the one who did it? And obviously, like, you know, like he said something about, I don't remember what he said about him, but these are the people who she met in her journeys, I think. So he was surprised. She was surprised. Yeah, like so, uh, I, I, he he was I with was with them for so long, such a long time. And uh, yeah, okay. Now here, Cora says like, all right, like enough Airbender hunting. Let's go track I and get Zahir. But Lin is like, no, you're not doing anything. You're going back and everything. He he she starts like you know like saying like I'm going to need to protect you this and that now. You know what? I like. I think that like, for the first time, I'm I'm against Lin here on the decision because, like, I know she she wants the best for her, but Cora is actually like you know like a lot more calm and collected, and you know like she she can I guess you could say handle herself at you know as much as she can. So how much more are they going to protect her? You know, like one day will come when she will have to do everything on her own. And what's going to happen when there's no one there to protect her? For example, maybe uh, all of them are, uh, you know, like, uh, what can I say? Maybe she gets kidnapped or maybe, maybe all of them are somehow unable to help her out. Maybe they're not there. You know, if they keep trying to protect her and just cage her up. You know, and when they were, when they were a child, she was a child. I could understand that. 
But now, like, you know, like, she, she, I feel like she's capable enough to not need protection. Like, yeah, like, Lin can go alongside her. I wouldn't have any problem with that. But trying to, like, confine her in, like, one city and just, like, having 50 bodyguards just following her around. I don't think that's a way to, like, you know, like, do this. So, it wouldn't, like, you know, I, I feel like it wouldn't be a problem if Lin said, you know what, I'm still concerned about you, so I'm going to follow you around. If that was what happened, I, I don't think Korra would have had a problem and neither would I. But her basically saying like, oh, you need to go back and we're going to like, you know, give you a place where you're going to be confined from here onwards unless and until Zahid is caught. You're going to have 50 bodyguards following you around and, you know, you know like all these things like, ah, I think that's, yeah, like that's not how this should go. So I, I was with Korra this time. I was like, yeah, like this, like, you know, this 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 is not how this should move and Cora should probably start like you know to try to handle this on not on her own she has her friends but not she should not just stay somewhere and be protected like how much long will this go then and but i was surprised when suin was like you should listen to her uh because i thought shuzuhumin would, would take her side but it makes sense why he said that at that moment because no, she was uh, wanting to calm down <laughs> Lin for that day. So Suin was like, you know what, like see it from her perspective and, you know, like just, you know, like just follow what she's saying. And later on Suin comes in and Suin is like, yeah, I told that at that moment because I wanted to calm, uh, like, you know, Lin down. So for this night, you're free to go. Here's the keys and just go and bring Ai Wei back. I'll try to stop. Uh, Lin in the morning So within that time you go and come back and try to bring Ai Wei back. I need to talk with him and Yeah And that's where it ends. So this is going to continue the next episode I'm guessing and we're probably going to try to track down Ai Wei and see what happens So that's it. Thanks for watching guys. This was my reaction to the legend of Korra book 3 episode number 7 and 8 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say and yeah i'll check them out so that's it thanks for watching and i will see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of korra uh, until then goodbye and have a nice day